Greetings once again and welcome to Showbiz. Showbiz was the original uh, working title for the album until I was looking at Amazon for song title ideas and I noticed that the phrase buy now was on every single website uh, and it would be a good way to sort of um, inject my uh, album name into everywhere uh, as a kind of um, little nod of the hat. So, Showbiz. Uh, it's disco-y, uh, sort of hectic um, shuffle, which I don't really listen to so much sort of shuffle music, but it fits and I had fun. Um, I think the original original chord progression came from Tone Space, C minor. <coughs> These chord one, don't know whether how the rest of it works out. But yeah, this uh, arranges harmony into a kind of um, grid space. Really fun way to come up with um, chord progressions and it's a free plugin. It's been superseded now and probably not available as 32-bit and here's a problem with using the tap tempo is that the, t the actual tempo for the song is 122.149635314 BPM um, and Nuendo is saying 122.15 big problem using tap tempo because uh, you try to put that into a DJ software and try to set the tempo to actually 122.149635314 BPM you're going to be in trouble um, but that was about carrying the vibe of what what I wanted the tempo without sort of looking at the um, the clock I mean there's no distinction between 122 point whatever BPM and 122 to a computer but to people working with computers, it's kind of annoying. Um, so, the super bass patch, that's right. I, re I remember the um, the original working title was like tap dancer or tap dancing. It's kind of got this like tap dancing uh, showbiz um, kind of, it's got a kind of rhythmic cadence that's sort of tap dancey to me. Um, and a sort of a phrase that's sort of a bit... Um, The way the phrases on the lead melody kind of um, finish up, the, the phrasing of them themselves sort of reminds me a bit of these uh, sort of old swing standards, but that doesn't kick in for a bit. So yeah, arpeggios all over the show. We'll get onto that phrase in a bit, but uh, we, we should talk about this kind of... Um, it's like a filter sweep. This jump, terrace dynamics, boom. It's like in the uh, the old sort of techno trick of sort of low pass filtering a um, a synthesizer, a bassline synthesizer, and kind of going before the drop. And this is kind of this idea that I'm crossing between wave mallet and Melita, These these two into Unipiz. Unipiz is a lot mellower and it's got a velocity assignment for the filter. So you can see as it. So the harder you hit the keyboard or the harder you input the velocity, the um, the brighter the note gets. So this, the, I've used this kind of idea as um, a compositional idea as a kind of sonic idea, as a kind of sonic electronic music idea of, of orchestration as a kind of taking the idea of this sort of filter sweep from dance music, but then um, using it compositionally with the notes as a kind of arrangement. So sort of making this sort of ersatz sort of filter sweep dance music, but doing it with MIDI. coming up to this sort of like swing standard sort of so there's a whole for me this whole thing there's there's a whole phrase this thing the the pizzicato synth and the hay sample are sort of inextricably linked Um, the, the, the hay sample 
resolves in a way the main melody. Someone on YouTube said it sounded like uh, Dr. Robotnik from Sonic the Hedgehog, which I loved as well. It's got this kind of sort of Soviet um, minor key kind of sort of blockiness to it, which I love. Also throughout these sections and in the climbs, there is this, if you if you keep an ear out for the, the clap, there is this kind of sort of question-answer sort of tonic-dominant relationship with the clap. You could almost link the lead synthesizer, the clap, and the hey together as kind of one phrase. I do play with that for a bit, but the, the exemplary idea would be this, this part. So you sort of, ground, that melody is grounded by this intermittent use of the clap. Um, there is definitely like a rhythmic, um, there's a rhythm to it that never changes, but what changes is whether it's played or not. Um, they, they may even be muted out of the, um, oh no, they've just been put in. Yeah, so we got the, the pads and the arpeggios. This is all playing the same chords. In the same positions, I think, even. Super simple. But also busy because it's an arpeggio. And three against four. Is it not? Yes, it is. So a three note chord. Oh, that's an open position too, so the actual chord spelling would be a bit more like that. But So we take the lowest degree of the chord and we move it down an octave. It just means that this one moves along with the bass line so much, so you're not really going to need to hear it as readily as the top two degrees, in my experience. Yeah, so it's uh, a three note chord that's repeated um, cyclically. And because it's three notes on a sixteenth, you have the sense that the the three note phrases sort of move around the even counting of the 4-4 four, four beat. So you have this extra note at the end and you have the arpeggio resetting on beat 4. Or put another way, you're, you're, you're counting 1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-
drop. Yeah, so wherever possible, if you can drop it out and do a little wink, there's the wink. So that pizzicato lead is just jumping between octaves or oh, turn off turn off solo there yeah. yeah so we're down an octave up an octave up another octave and it's that kind of filter sweep idea that long long development thing in dance music Oh, it's getting really high now that something's going to happen and what happens is um, after this section using this velocity mapping to that synth getting brighter as the notes get 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 higher in terms of velocity up an octave so we get we go mellow, bright, mellow, bright, and then we go up an octave, mellow, bright, and then we get higher and less mellow, and then boom. So this whole section, which for some reason reminds me of, there's a Michael Jackson tune that has this kind of same, I don't know which one it is. Maybe it's Beat It. Um, Inspector Norse by Todd Terry, Todd Terge, uh, has this the same idea, which is this is what I'm trying to rip off. Um, that it's a banger tune that that goes for a good couple of two or three minutes, whatever it is, three three minutes in Showbiz's case, and then there's a kind of harmonic turnaround where things get thicker and. Um, something happens something inverts or something something solidifies and i was trying to have this this tune sort of hang on a bit or hang on three minutes where you're you're like oh, okay this is cool this is a banger and then at a point where you sort of least expect it there's some harmonic development which which sort of anchors down the tune a lot more and kind of really gives it a kick in the guts um and retaining that same same melody but the whole thing's got a giant so it's a giant kind of question and then a short answer so we're using film score on that bottom uh, that's this is the default patch for M1 if you open an instance of M1 there's this patch which is something that I've always avoided because the you, you begin to develop familiarity leading to a form of contempt for a default sound because you start playing it and you're like oh it's film score again but sometimes film score especially once you get used to it <laughs> um, I found myself putting film score in, in everything so it's, quite, it's a choir on top with the MIDI mapping and then this kind of low piano and bells. So yeah, the, 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 when film score, film score comes in, it kind of anchors everything down. Kind of got a TV, got a TV finish, like a TV title. It's like Showbiz. See that Showbiz? I think I tried to slow it down, but I don't. I can't find any um, any evidence to that. Um, whether I did slow it down or not, I, I definitely thought about it. 
and we also have another loose orphan section of uh oh yeah this this aggravates me this aggravates me to no end this is i i think this is the part of the chord progression just kind of stepping up it sounds so boring i think i was kind of trying to go for a sort of c section as a, a, a in terms of an abc section um but this just that's just paint by numbers i can i can hear it in my head as it's going through and i don't like it One other thing in the um, in the hay sample is that there is there's kind of a bad edit on purpose. That um, actually, this whole thing might be is quite crusted up. Yeah, you got Sonic Maximizer, You Are Shock, which is the VST version of Fruity Loop Sound Goodizer, and then a tape distortion, and then this ridiculous EQ curve, which I would never do these days. That looks like it's doing absolutely nothing, but it does sound nice and crusty. So. Um, turn it up all the way maybe so it's got this kind of like clunky like click at the end of it which I kept in there because it's quite good rhythmically just kind of leaving it sort of half done uh, on purpose yeah like a lot of uh, tunes on by now uh, there is swing on all the tracks obviously you can you can hear that or if if we want to turn it all off it'd sound pretty funny I think I was working as this straight and then I added swing to the drum track and I was like oh now I've got to add swing to everything so without swing very metric very just doesn't carry at all the the right sort of rhythm with the too even not funky so swing is you're you're delaying every every second note or you're pulling it forward however however the program defines swing you're changing every second note based on a time base whatever that is with 16th or an eighth or a quarter note whatever it is um but yeah awful truly awful This was the first record I was working on where I discovered Swing, I think, as well, generally. There's one more track of Hey that, um... Oh, there's the slowdown. There it goes. There it goes. Right, I knew I was missing that. Okay. So, as I'm working on a tune, I'll slow it all down just to see what it sounds like, to see if there's anything that sort of jumps out, because... This is Vaporwave after all. And uh, TD96 must mean that it's... Um, it might be 96 kilobit MP3 as well, but... I was into this but then I realized that it makes the song ridiculously long and you're asking a lot of the listener to, to be listening to this for five and a half minutes so and also I think in the context of the album once it's put it put in there that slow it just hopefully in the future we'll just be able to listen to music slow down as slow down as much as we like still sounds pretty good though 